many old faces. Good to be here. Miss you guys. So uh, first, well, let's talk about politics. Um, 2011 has been a very interesting year for all of us. I mean, for Morocco, for the whole region, and for the whole world. Democracy became a buzzword. Everybody today is talking about democracy. But then, I mean, what, uh, how does it work? No. What's democracy? I mean, there are lots of definitions. I like this one from the Prime Minister of England, Churchill. He said, democracy is the worst form of government, except all those other forms that have been tried. I mean, what does it mean? It also means that we should keep trying and improving and looking for other ways to improve concepts of democracy. And today, there are different definitions. We can remember, we can remember in the Soviet Union, we had the Council of Democracy, the Soviets. But today, everybody agrees in the URSS, it was not a democracy. In Libya, we had Jamahiriya, which is basically states of the masses. And today, we agree that on Libya, we did not have a democracy. We do, we do agree today that there is one prototype of democracy that's used on the West that we agree on. That's basically the correct democracy. And it's becoming a model for other countries to follow and learn from and engage to become a democracy. Basically, democracy is based on very simple terms. You know, sometimes when you talk politics, it becomes like, ooh, big words and stuff. But politics at the end is very simple when we, once we understand it. There was the, the French philosopher, Rousseau, who defined basically the relationship between government and the people as a contract, just like you know, we have uh, contracts with the electricity company, with the phone company. We have a contract between the people and the ruler. We call it the social contract. And it it's basically simple terms. Basically, the people give power to the ruler. The ruler protects the rights of the people. And in the case of the ruler misuse this power, well, people replace the ruler. And the semicolon there for the programmers out there. And then to make it more basically detailed, they said, OK, let's have representatives of the people. And today we have House of Representatives, Parliament, in different countries. And those people are supposed to represent the people. And in case we don't agree with them, we just change them. So however, something is wrong. I mean, this year, we, we can watch on TV the Occupy Wall Street in New York. I mean, these guys are asking, basically say, oh, we are not represented. We are the 99%. And th those who are representing us, actually, they're not. We, we heard in different countries in the region, basically listen to the voice of people. It's mass or shab, which means basically that the, the voice of the people is not listened to. We also, for example, in, in, in the US, we had this message that healthcare can't wait, so we cannot wait for healthcare, which means that these people are expecting the change now. They, are not, they don't want to wait for four or five years then to vote again and change their representative. They want it right now. And we felt it again in Spain, Los Indignados in, uh, in Madrid, where they had democracia real ya, yeah, which means real democracy now. And then again, I mean, those people are supposed to be democratic. But then the citizens of their countries today are saying, no, 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 this is not the democracy we want. We want a real democracy where our voice is heard. And they want it now. So, so if, we, if we do a synthesis, if we do analysis of, <coughs> of what's happening in the world, we can see a, a pattern. We can see some signs. We can find that basically those uh, claims are universal. They are not limited to one regional country or race or religion. I found it in different countries. In fact, the, the examples I gave you are from three different continents and speak in three different languages. We find the feeling of urgency, which means we want the, the change now, we want our voice to be heard now. We also feel it's crowd, crowd based, it's leaderless. I mean, it's coming from the people, from the crowd on the streets. And also we got the feeling of participation, which is basically like the whole crowd participating and working together to get there. So what does technology and internet, what do they have to do here? I mean, we, let, let's back up a second. We found with this new era, we have a different way of communication. We have a different culture. We have this instant communication. 
We have this peer-to-peer -peer communication, mobile communication, instance, well, uh, which give us this instant gratification. We want to talk now, we want to get result now, we want to get satisfaction now. And this is where we feel that there is a deja vu between the patterns that exist in technology and the pattern that exists in politics. Basically, the technology today is universal, it gives the feeling of urgency, it's crowd-based, and it helps with the participation model. So, basically, in, in what the same people today who are using this technology to communicate and to have this urge for uh, instant gratification are the ones who are seeking uh, change in politics. Basically, what these people, what they are seeking for is instant political gratification and active participation, which basically has been discussed on presentations before. So what can be done? I mean, this is the question that everybody is asking in different countries. What can be done? There is this Arabic poet uh, who said, basically, And basically, the, the, the translation here, just cured evil with more evil. To put it in simple terms, the technology development is irreversible. So instead of resisting this wave, we should just embrace it. So instead, instead of calling names to basically those youth in Egypt, Morocco, and other countries as the Facebook kids, we should probably listen more carefully to them and talk to them, and more importantly, create tools and technologies to empower them even more. then basically empowering them and rethinking the whole communication process between the ruler and the people that we are so used to it. So the example I'll talk to you today is basically Morocco. So Morocco, we had this change of constitution in 2011, a very historical moment for the country. But then when we started the discussion about the change of the constitution, we wanted to open new questions. We wanted first, Basically, we want the people, citizens, to participate on writing this social contract, the constitution. We understand the people today, I mean, with the classical model, go vote on the constitution if they agree or they don't, or they don't, or they don't agree. But they also want to participate on drafting it. That's the first problem we wanted to kind of discuss. The second is when we look at the text of the social contract, when we look at the text of the constitution, Sometimes we have this feeling that I like this part, but I don't agree with this chapter, for example. And to the, with today's model, the referendum is white and, or black. Vote yes or vote no. We don't have the ability to say, oh, I, I want to vote for this article, or I don't, wanna li I don't like this part. And that was the philosophy behind the website, Reform.ma, which basically opened the debate in every single article of the Constitution, basically the previous one of 1996. The idea we had, we took each article of the Constitution, we enabled voting I like, or I agree, or I don't agree in each article, and we opened uh, the discussion and uh, proposals of each article of, of the, for, for the change. So in, in this way, basically, we enabled the participation of the people on the drafting of the constitution. And then at the end, we got basically, we added up the results to get a report that is quantitative, and then it kind of reflects where the patterns and the, 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 what, what people want. So what did we get from the website? The, the website was visited by more than 150,000 visits. Basically, in Morocco, this number is, is pretty important. I mean, this number is, uh, is bigger than the number of votes of some political parties today. Uh, this, this number, basically, we, we got 150,000 people at least to read the Constitution, which is a huge achievement by itself. The site got national and international media coverage, and unfortunately, international more than national. And then we initiated, we helped initiate similar projects in Tunisia and Egypt. For, for similar uh, projects. And most importantly, this, we got invited to present uh, the results of the website to the National Commission of the Drafting of the Constitution, which in other terms, 
people who participated on the website participated on the legislation of the, of the Constitution, which is a huge achievement. Thank you. Oops. All right. Thank you. Uh, another example is Maxad Prama, which is basically we just had this project uh, a couple of months ago. The idea here is we want the citizens to participate on the observation of elections. Everybody kind of cries and say, oh, we have bad elections, we have corruptions, we have fraud. But then we said, as, as we discussed in earlier presentations, that the participation of citizens is important for the success of this transition. So the idea here is we're going to use different technologies. We used basically SMS, email, Twitter, Facebook. And we integrated all this information and we mapped it into the map of Morocco. First, to collect data, and second, to uh, get where the hot areas here are and uh, quantify the problems. Uh, so this way, basically, on this website, we got the people to, uh, to actively participate on the observation of these elections of 2011. One more project which, which is inspiring is coming from India, which is related to transparency work. So in India, this, there is this project of uh, fighting corruption by collecting, uh, collecting data and cases from citizens about, about the corruption cases and then do all the analysis and quantitative cases and even take it to court. And this is something that could be inspiring to, to us as well. Okay, basically what's the expectations here? Uh, technology did revolutionize different sectors, health, culture, communication, industry, administration, e-government, etc. We should expect soon <laughs> a revolution on the rules of the game of politics. Today, technology did not affect yet politics that much, but you should expect that. One last note, we should remember that this is an eternal search for freedom, justice, and dignity. We are just continuing the work of our parents and our grandparents. What we're doing today is just our part in a slightly different and a new way. Thank you. <laughs>